All right, so this video is kind of a follow-up to the previous video I just posted, which is called When Spirituality Isn't So Spiritual. And this is really a follow-up to that and also an expansion on the concepts in which we talked about. Because if you watch that video and you've watched many of my videos, you may form an opinion, like many, that somehow what I'm saying is very pessimistic and negative and very just critical and judgmental and all these kind of <laughs> all these kind of moralistic bad things that we don't really need well obviously since it's my perspective i would kind of disagree with that for a couple of very specific and very simple and clear reasons number one is understanding that when it comes to dealing with life anything or any creative avenue, there's a time for learning and a time for forgetting. So pretty much if we want to make it really, 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 really simple, all I'm really saying is this most of the time in that let's say you're learning an instrument or you are uh, painting or you're doing some sort of creative outlet, but we'll use a musical instrument because I play musical instruments so it's easy for me to speak in those terms. So at some point when you're learning an instrument, you're learning score, you're learning chords and scales, and you're learning all of these, you know, notations and all of these formulas and all these logistical things and trying to figure out how to put it together and trying to eventually translate it into something that you can just do without having to think about it, something that you can just express naturally and easily. Now, if you are going to be creative with this instrument, if you're going to express yourself or express feelings or emotions or be in the flow and be creative, you can't really be sitting there thinking, okay, now B minor to A major to this to that. Okay, wait. You can't, you can't really be analyzing and thinking it because it's removing you from allowing this thing to come through your physical body and kind of surrender to that process. So pretty much all the time, that's in a simplistic way, kind of what I'm saying. <laughs> so, and that's the first reason. Second reason for some people who think a little bit differently is that we can understand that the human mind is a natural tendency most of the time is to kind of just acquire, take things in, and just hold on to them. You know, we hold on to stories from however many years ago we tell stories that are really aren't even relevant to our lives anymore we think thoughts that aren't even relevant we consume information all the time and that's just kind of our natural tendency so then if we are admitting or acknowledging that perhaps that tendency is a little excessive or extreme or is causing imbalance then wouldn't it make sense to perhaps use a complementary dynamic or process to balance that. Meaning, if the natural tendency is to acquire, 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 wouldn't it make sense that uh, some f element of discarding might be counterbalancing and might be useful? Because obviously just adding and adding and adding is just reaffirming the existing imbalance. And this is often a tricky thing which arises in having any kind of philosophical or spiritual or metaphysical or evolutionary or conscious or whatever the fuck you want to call it kind of conversation is that most of the time people just go into this wanting to affirm their existing opinion or wanting a validation for what they already believe to be true. And this is something I've seen a lot as kind of like a health person or consultant is that a lot of times people will want to consult with me or work with me really just so they can tell me what they already know and maybe get me to validate that. Like, oh, this is what I'm doing, this is why I think it's good, and this is what I read, and this and this, and, da, 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 and just all this, and tell me all of this stuff. It's like, well, then why am I here? If you just need to talk to someone, you have friends for that. You know, you don't need me to say, oh, great job, pat you on the back, you're really doing it. I don't know. It's, it's just, it's kind of like, also the Zen cliche classic thing is, you know, if your cup is already full, what can you really do? So that's the second reason, and that's really where it's, the stuff is coming from. And if you think that's pessimistic or negative, basically what you're saying is that the Yi Jing, which is behind me, 
is pessimistic and negative and Taoism is pessimistic and, and negative and Zen is pessimistic and negative because basically everything I'm saying is just coming from that shit. <laughs> it's really, it's not like it's an original thing. It's just a perspective. And it's really, in another way, we can translate it as basically the evolution of something from unconscious incompetence to unconscious competence. Meaning what I basically illustrated in the video previously and many other videos is basically you start off and you maybe have something happening, you don't even know about it. And then all of a sudden you know about it. So then you're basically consciously incompetent, meaning, oh, I'm aware that I'm not skilled at this thing or this whatever. But then eventually we want to be at the place where we're kind of like the artist or musician where you can just express and flow and do what we need to do without necessarily having to really think about it. Which again brings us back to concept of learning and then forgetting. Because basically if we fixate on what is kind of introductory material to a system or to a tradition or to a practice, then it's really going to be difficult to progress to more advanced stages. So if we become fixed on labels and systems and practices of gurus and being a devotee and wrapping our whole identity up in that stuff, it's not that there's anything wrong with that. It's just that perhaps it is still seeking validation and fulfillment from an external object, which might not be the best uh, program. And really, maybe it's maybe not that efficient or effective. And simply put, you know, if we're trying to grow and advance, then eventually comes a point where we have to get rid of <laughs> the past to make room for the present and the future. That's pretty much it. If you call that pessimistic, you call that negative, you call that critical or judgmental or mean or whatever, then so be it. But if, if for me, pointing out ways in which things are maybe not efficient and how they could be more efficient, how they could perhaps flow better and, and create more joy and enjoyment and smiling and compassion and wisdom and humor and humility, seems pretty fucking optimistic to me, but <laughs> what do I know? I'm just a dude uh, with a MacBook and some businesses and some years and lifetimes and a couch and a book behind me. And I forgot some really good tea. Which is so good, so amazing. So that's pretty much it for this video. I'm just going to sit here for another 10 or 20 minutes and drink some tea. If you just want to watch that, it's cool too. It'll allow me to do my direct mind-to-mind -mind psychic transmission. Which is really where the communication is. No, but really that's the end of the video. And I don't know, hopefully this makes sense. And... Yeah, that's why I do it. <laughs> that's basically every video is kind of the same because it's the same format and comes from a place of wanting to help and reduce suffering, reduce inefficiency, and basically, I don't know, it's pretty much it. But it's really not up to me. Ultimately, what I say is not going to make sense to the vast majority of people, but to a very small group of people it's going to make sense maybe I don't know <laughs> it's not really my responsibility or my job so the rest is up to you so you've watched this far hooray <laughs> anyways thanks for watching and I'll talk to you soon